Have you ever wondered who owns space? We have all these cool satellites and space stations beyond our atmosphere, but even with all of that going on, there's no one who truly owns the cosmos. And, even if someone did, how much? In this video, we'll discuss the reasons why it's important to regulate space and how humans can make that happen. Get your spacesuits on, guys, and let's dive in. First up, space is a very competitive domain. It's true, almost everyone wants to go to space. We do too, but the closest Starbucks would be a couple hundred thousand miles away from us, so we'll pass for now. But, from aspiring astronauts to billionaires, we're looking at you, Elon, there's a long list of people who want to see the void above. And that's exactly why there's been a race amongst first world countries to mark their territories in the universe. After all, space is strategically a very powerful medium for anyone who wants to have control, and every year we depend more and more on space-based technology for defense, civil, and commercial purposes. In 1957, the first group of humans ventured into space through the artificial satellite Sputnik, and since then, there's been no going back. But now that we have space junk hurling down at us from above, there are a lot of concerns about how we approach the use of space as a species. And lucky for you, we're here to break it down for you. Now, why do we need to regulate space? As we mentioned earlier, space is pretty useful for a lot of reasons. And, as human activity increases up there, there's a lot of risk as to what could possibly happen if there are no rules set in place. It's like when you don't establish boundaries with a person and let them walk all over you. The only person who loses here is yourself. And if you don't set the record straight, you risk your sanity. So yeah, space is like that too. With so many countries lining up to send their best technologies up above, there's bound to be some sort of traffic that will overwhelm our orbit. And, if that traffic isn't controlled, then that's ultimately going to affect us in the long run. This unmanaged competition of who can fill up the space first will only lead to conflict and chaos if no intervention is made at the right time. Another reason why we need to set things straight is the amount of debris floating up in space. It's no secret that space is full of junk. Think of pollution on Earth and multiply it by a couple of hundred times, and there you have it, floating pieces of aluminum in space, traveling at a speed that would turn us into human shish kebabs if they collided with us. And, unless we want an all-you-can-eat party for the cannibals, we need to set some ground rules first. The first thing is, when you don't regulate pollution, polluters get away with polluting. And then, to remove all that trash, you need some deep pockets to bear the costs. But, we can't just stop sending things out in space. We need these satellites for a lot of things, like GPS, weather prediction systems, rescue operations, and of course, the internet. There would be no Wi-Fi without satellite internet services. Yikes. Now, imagine a world without being able to Instagram your aesthetically looking brunch. Sounds terrifying, right? So yeah, it is a complex ethical debate whether we need to stop thinking of space as our upstairs attic completely, and we don't know about you, but we like our Wi-Fi. So what are the men in suits doing about this whole space situation? The issue of weaponizing space and using it for commercial purposes has been the subject of table talks worldwide. To to avoid conflict and potential wars, there have been treaties signed among many countries to sort of keep a promise not to overstep. Like the Outer Space Treaty in 1966. It was an effort by the United Nations to regulate activity in space and keep everyone in order. It stated that space would only be used for the benefit of countries, that no nuclear weapons would be placed into orbit Earth, and that space would not be used as a big giant pitless trash can to dump waste. The UN hoped the signatories would respect the international law, but some countries still had a lot of concerns about their security and weren't in favor of the nuclear weapon ban. How crazy is that? Thanks to the international community, though, all suggestions about weapons in space were rejected, and thank God we don't have a nuke looming above us. Next, some astronomers have voiced their own concerns regarding space regulation. Astronomers are some of the coolest people we know. They spend their entire lives looking at the stars, trying to figure out their movements and how they affect our energies. It's basically like being a wizard, but with a telescope. But it seems like even cosmologists are having a hard time keeping up with the stars, thanks to how crowded our space has become. An astronomer from UNC Asheville, Professor Britt Lundgren, opened up about how satellite trails are threatening their work and how it's also affecting people who consider the night sky as an important part of their heritage. She also talked about how astronomer research is important and figuring out more about how humankind, but their job has become harder ever since the abundance of satellites in space. And we totally understand how that can be a problem. It's like you're trying to get the perfect snap and then someone walks across, ruining it. Well, obviously the snap isn't doing mankind a favor, but you get it. And last, the global community needs to come together to save space. If you Google an image of the Earth and its surrounding satellites, you'll probably end up having an existential crisis, like us. It's terrifying to think that we're actively destroying our own planet, and it's even scarier to realize that we're extending that damage to space too. Space traffic is a real issue, and while the traffic exists on Earth, there are no space cops floating in space to keep that madness in order. And so, it's important for the international community to come up with ways to manage the collage of metal and steel up 
there so that Australia doesn't become a graveyard for SpaceX parts. Later this month, the UN Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space will gather to discuss issues that demand international cooperation in space, and we hope someone smart and compassionate comes up with a way to create a secure, sustainable space. And now, moving on to other news. First up, Sarah Sabri becomes the first Egyptian astronaut to travel into space. Earlier this week, Jeff Bezos' space company Blue Origin sent Sabri as the first Egyptian citizen into space and their new rocket called New Shepard. Bezos' company made its sixth trip to space this year alone, and since July 2021, has sent 31 people into space as tourists. Sarah is the founder of the Society for the Promotion of Space Research and also has a project called Space for Humanity that promises to provide affordable access to space for common people like us. Sabri's accomplishments finally won her a place on Bezos' aircraft and is an inspiration to Egyptians, especially women, that women can shine bright even in space. Next, NASA finds a strange object on Mars. Mars has been the object of NASA's curiosity for decades now. Heck, we even have a chocolate bar named after it. And with the number of rovers Mars has on its surface, we're not surprised they found something spooky up there. So, when NASA found a spaghetti-like material on Mars, it got us thinking, did someone pack spaghetti and meatballs for the rover? Turns out, the strange-looking ball was just a piece of netting used to protect spacecraft, and as much as we wanted to believe little Nana's delivery in space, we're glad Mars isn't haunted. And finally, Beijing's Galactic Energy completes its third orbital mission in space. China is on a roll with its space missions, and this private rocket company is proof that China is definitely ahead in the game. On Tuesday, the Series 1Y3 rocket was set off at the Waikwan Satellite Launch Center in northeast China's Gobi Desert, and settled into a sun-synchronous orbit 500 kilometers above of Earth and three small satellites. Out of those three, two of them were Earth observation satellites, and the third was a technology demonstration satellite. The mission was important because it marked the success of the first privately owned rocket company that completed three orbital launches and performed the best out of all of its other competitors. Galactic Energy's rocket is the perfect choice for domestic and foreign clients, and is easy on the pocket too, by spacecraft standards, obviously. And while we do believe these missions are cool and groundbreaking, we hope going forward these companies realize that the Earth needs more saving than the sky needs satellites. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think we should be regulating space, or should we just leave it as it is? Let us know in the comments section down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this. And until then, see you in the next one.